The previous video, I did a review of The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Pyle. And the library also had the story of King Arthur and his knights, also by Howard Pyle. And because it was right there on the library shelves, and because I enjoyed The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood, I thought, why not? Why not continue on with another book by Howard Pyle while well, I'm in the zone? Um, I did... I do actually have like 10 books I'm halfway through at the moment and try to avoid adding more books to my reading list before I've knocked out the ones I'm halfway through with. But I also did think, you know, sometimes when you're in the zone, you just have to continue. Because if I, if I said to myself, well, I'll, I'll get around to this other book someday in the future, who knows when I might track it down again? Who knows when I might have time on my reading list? So I thought, okay, I'm, I'm in the zone. I'll just continue on with this. Um, although, looking on at Wikipedia, it appears this is one of, I think, four or five books that Howard Pyle wrote about King Arthur. Uh, and it looks like, I haven't actually done a lot of research into this yet, but it looks like collectively they tell the whole King Arthur saga. So I don't know if I've just committed myself to reading a whole series of books now or what, but I think this is the only one uh, my library has. So if I was going to continue on with the rest of the series, um, I, I hate reading stuff off of a computer screen, so I'd have to get it printed up, which you can do in Vietnam fairly cheaply. Just go to Project Gutenberg, copy it into a Microsoft Word document, bring it over to the local print shops, which are plentiful here in Saigon, and have them printed and bind it for you. I, I've actually done that with a number of public domain books, uh, both here in Vietnam and in Cambodia, so that might be an option. On the other hand, that might be more hassle than it's worth. And at, actually, at the moment, at, the, at this moment when I'm making the video, Saigon is going into another lockdown because of the second wave of COVID. So I'm not going to be going outside the apartment unnecessarily uh, if I don't have to. Of course, I'm a slow reader. So, I mean, by, it, it's, a, it's a short book, but even so, I'm, I'm a slow reader. Uh, this, you know, it's probably going to be about a month before I finish this, and then who knows what the COVID situation will be like. So, um, I've actually not read a lot of King Arthur stories uh, in my youth. Um, I, I was a huge Greek mythology nerd, but I never really made it into the Arthurian romances. Uh, I did read about, uh, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago now, The Once and Future King by T.H. White, uh, and really enjoyed that. Although, I'm a little bit... Yeah, I w I've been thinking about it, and I only remember it vaguely, which, uh, you know, to some extent is fair enough, because it's a huge book, and I did read it about, I don't know, seven years ago now. Uh, on the other hand, I think back to when I was young and I was really into Greek mythology. And, you know, a lot of those Greek mythology stories, I, th I think, you know, I read them once and they were permanently burned into my brain. Um, so, I think I may have lost some of that youthful memory power where I, you know, I just remembered everything I read a lot more back when I was young. Which disturbs me to realize but uh, what, what can you do? I, on the other hand, though, the, those, those Greek mythology stories, some part of the reasons I remembered them so well is because they were so memorable. The Once and Future King by T.H. White, uh, for all its brilliance, is also really long and has a lot of stuff in there. So it, it's maybe a little bit difficult when you're done with that, especially a few years afterwards, to remember the plot points the same way you would remember a Greek mythology tale. But anyways, I'm from that book, I'm vaguely familiar with some of the beats of the King Arthur legend. Uh, I've so far, I've started this and I've read the prologue and I'm into the first chapter. 
Now, uh, one thing I noticed right off the bat uh, is Howard Pyle's other book was uh, somewhat sanitized for children, uh, cleaning up some of the violence in those old ballads uh, and making it less violent for children. I noticed right in the beginning of this book, uh, if I remember right, there was something in The Once and Future King, which was based on the original legend, that King Uther had Arthur disguise his, not, not Arthur, King Uther had Merlin disguise his appearance so he could sleep with, uh, what was her name? He could sleep with Egraine, who was the wife of his enemy, and that's how Arthur was born. Uh, and that's also why uh, Morgan Le Fay, uh, Arthur's half-sister, hated him so much, or why, why that faction of the family didn't like him because of the uh, origin of, of how Arthur was conceived. In this version, uh, Uther Pendragon just marries her after her husband has already died. And I thought maybe that was a sanitization of the early legends. Although I, I looked this up on Wikipedia just now, and both both versions of the story are apparently in the early legends. So he, he's actually... We, we won't count that as the old legends being sanitized. We'll, we'll just count that as an alternative version. Um, much like, uh, or actually exactly like, uh, the Merry Adventures of Robin Hood was written in uh, this kind of uh, pretend old English or uh, mock Shakespearean. Uh, th this version also has that going on. I'm only a few pages into it, but you only need to be a few pages into it uh, to see how they're talking. Uh, I mean, what, what's a good example? Um... Yeah. When Merlin had made an end of speaking thus, Uther Pendragon made reply with a very steadfast countenance in this wise. Merlin, so far as my death is concerned, when my time cometh to die, I believe God will give me grace to meet my end with entire, entire cheerfulness. For certs, that's certs spelled, let me just grab the camera. Search spelled, uh, where is it? C-E-R-T-E-S, which I think is, means certain. I, I, it must mean certain. Uh, my lot is in that wise no different from that of any other man who hath been born of woman, uh, etc. So, so it's... it's like uh, the Merry Adventures of Robin Hood. Uh, I mean, this this book, Merry Adventures of Robin Hood, was published in 1883. This one was in 1902. So it's, it, you know, it's well into modern times, but uh, he, he's doing this on purpose to evoke the style of the old legends. Uh, the other thing you'll notice maybe is that these two books here are by the same publisher. You can see the same style. And they also have the same trend of the illustrations. Actually, are there any illustrations in this book? Sorry, I've just started this book. So there, there aren't many. But yeah, the, the ones that are here are by the same guy. Scott McCowan, who does, the, does them on something called scratch painting or something? Ah, uh, scratch board. Uh, Scott created these drawings in scratch board. Which, you know, fine, okay, but the thing is, Howard Pyle was a famous artist and illustrator in his day, and he illustrated his own book, so why not use Howard Pyle's original illustrations? I mean, the only thing I can think of is uh, his illustrations were so intricate that it would have cost too much money with ink or typesetting or what. I mean, that, that, that's got to be the reason, right? What, what other reasons would there be for not using classic illustrations 
from a famous artist and illustrator when he's the one who wrote the book and those are the originals that go with it. It's, it's, I don't really know how publishing works, but that's got to be the reason, right? I can't think of any other possible reasons. So anyways, uh, be working through this book in the next few weeks. It, you know, it's a children's book and it's not long, but I've always been a slow reader. So this, this will take me a few weeks at minimum. Uh, check in with me on my weekly reading vlogs to see how I'm doing with it. And then once I finish it up, I'll give it its own separate review.